Hey everyone, great speaker after speaker after speaker. And right now, uh, Maria here, who is uh, with the company, um, is it a community, right? Women in customer success. Um, now, she has, is that a community? Because you also have a podcast and many different things. Yeah, it's podcast and community. And I believe I, I will tell you more about it. But yeah, we can keep it as, as podcast. <laughs> Awesome. So Maria is here going to talk about the importance of personal brand in customer success. Amazing. This is the first topic of its kind. I'm so excited for this session. Thank Maria, you, Maria, the floor is yours. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, and really, thank you for having me here. Uh, I wanted to say I'm dialing in from the United Kingdom. So please feel free to let me know where are you dialing from. And yeah, we are talking about personal brand today. Now, this is a topic very dear to my heart, and I'm, I'm really happy that I can share it with you today. Uh, and I realize there is loads to cover for this topic, so I just hope that at least I can give you some indications of what it is and some really practical steps for you to follow. But let's get into it just uh, very briefly about me. I think it's just what you see is what you get with me, right? Uh, at the end of the day, no matter what I do, I'm just a mom to my kids and just trying to cook some nice dinners for them that they would eat. And a part of that, uh, yeah, I'm a musician by background. I, I like to say I'm creation in the United Kingdom, being here from around a decade because I can joke and say me being creation just explains a lot of things. Uh, that I'm at the moment a manager of customer success EMEA for ClickUp. I have my podcast uh, and I've been also very humbled to be named top 100 uh, customer success strategist for this year. This week, uh, at the end of the day, is just a list, but it's really a humbling experience. And yeah, I love running. Don't have much time for it, but when I do, I really enjoy it. So let's get into my topic. As I said, there is really so much to cover, but uh, I would like this session to be, if possible, practical for you as well. So by the end of it, that you can really understand what personal brand is, how you should go about it, why would you even care, and hopefully to give you some pra practical steps on uh, how or, or, or how to take your brand out there in the world. And of course, don't forget to ask any questions if you have along the way. Okay, uh, let's start with what? For me, this is so interesting <laughs> because loads of people are asking, what is personal brand? Oh, it's just, you know, posting your pictures on social media. Is that just uh, writing something on LinkedIn or just constantly putting selfies out there? That's an, that's an interesting <laughs> explanation, but it's not it, really. It could be maybe a little part of it, but that's not what personal brand is all about. And for today, I'm going to really use this quote by Jeff Bezos. I really love how he defined personal brand. It is what other people say about you when you are not in the room. And now there are so many reasons why I like this quote. And you can even think, what, what does it mean? But I'm always thinking it is such a truth. It is so real. That's why I like it. And I, these are the questions that I want you to think about. It means really when your name is mentioned, what are the first associations connected to it? What do people think about you? What would they say or comment about you? And just that idea that what people say about you when you're not in the room doesn't even have to be literally, especially now in virtual world, but it's really, the opinions, the perceptions that people form about you. Um, and we are going to kind of dip deeper into this quote to, today, or at least I, I hope we will. Um, and I now want you to really think about this. You've been in a meeting, maybe in a room if you're lucky, or it was a phone call at your home. You leave the room or you end the phone call people are talking about you. A few people that are left in the room, they're talking about you, or people whom you just hang up the phone with, they are still having thoughts about you. They form opinions. 
what would they hear? And they like to think they would hear something or they would think something like, oh, I like her. Oh, she's so lovely, so respectful towards my team. You can sense she's committed to her customers. She's generous with her time to help enable my team. She's trusted, she brings new perspectives, she's positive, enthusiastic, or she makes some things, some complex things simple. What would they say about you? And I wonder, do you, do you see what I'm doing here? I'm really talking about those real life situations because no matter when it is happening during the day, you're constantly interacting with people. And as a result of your interactions, they're always forming opinions about you. And this, what I just mentioned, is some forms of values or behaviors that other people associate with you. Those are the people, the things that people really notice about you. And I want you to think even further, what else will they say about you? Maybe, you know, she's looking for new adventures or she's committed to constant improvement. He doesn't settle for the second best. He always delivers the unexpected or he does better than others. He really makes a difference. And now what we are doing, we are adding to those values and behaviors. We are adding some drivers and motivations. And now let's go further. What else? Uh, I'm just taking you through a little bit of a journey here because I just want you to understand there are so many of those different things that people can notice about you just by talking to you and interacting with you on a daily basis. Do they say, oh, she's respectful of my views. She holds her team accountable. She's trusted by my team. She makes quick decisions. That's kind of handy. Now we are talking about the reputation as well. Oh, I heard she's always you know, consistent. There are so many things that people can notice about you. And I think you get my point now, right? Because they are every single time you're interacting with someone, they are forming your opinions or just validating the opinions they already have about you. And this is what brings me to a few lessons from this same quote. It's a, such a simple quote, but you, we can learn a lot. Uh, firstly is your brand is you, so it's already there. And why am I saying that? It's so simple, so basic, but the simple fact that people form opinions about you, that means that no matter do you choose to have personal brand or not, it's there, it exists, right? So it's just a matter of what are you gonna do about it? Because it is already out there. And I like to say, I would like to break some of the myths because very often people say, oh, you have to create your personal brand. You know, you need to now start thinking uh, how to invent it, but you can't actually create it or engineer it because it's really you. There's no point of trying to do something else. It's not a decision whether you will create it or not. It is already out there and you doing something about it or not also speaks about yourself and your brand that again sends some message and tells something more about you. And so I, I really want you to think back about that quote. No matter what you're doing, you know, people are going to talk about you in a sense. People are going to have opinions about you and people are going to notice things about you. So please put that what it is around you, put it to good use. And that's now what brings us to my next lesson when it comes to that quote is really the whole point of thinking about personal brand is also the education. It is what you want people to think about you when you're not in the room. You can influence that, you can really educate them. And that's mostly what we think when we, when, when we talk about developing your brand. It's really about educating others to, um, in a way that you want them to see you and perceive you. So I think that you would just like to know how do we educate people? How does it all work? And I mentioned previously some of the values and behaviors. So if we were now in a workshop, I would tell you to write down some notes and try to think of the words that would describe you. And you can do it later on at home for yourself. It's really a good exercise to do. But we are now talking about really 
all of those ingredients like a pyramid there are different ingredients like values drivers reputation behavior skills and image all of those things together are ingredients that form your personal brand and you are basically choosing how you are going to package it so i'm just i want to leave you with a few words for it so that it's easier for you to understand how you can know what is it for you what is your personal brand so the values are really the principles you live by responsibility empathy respect trustworthiness loyalty acceptance of others high standards what are those principles that you live by no matter what no matter in which situation you find yourself and then drivers what motivates you what makes you wake up in the morning is it doing your best being better than others just being yourself continuously learning making a difference in the world what is that driver for you as we are moving on reputation what are you known for or what you want to be known for what are the things that people associate when they hear your name and this is really very important and then what do they notice about your behavior positive enthusiastic caring bubbly diligent sparkling that could be all sorts of things and then you also have to be aware of your skills what are you good at naturally are you a great storyteller do you generate energy between your team members do you motivate others well are you ultra calm in crisis and then finally is the image how do you convey all of those things above in the way that you sound you act and you look so that's really the packaging for your brand how is it is it elegant quirky dynamic colorful conservative it can be anything but those are really the ingredients that make yourself that make it you it is your brand all of those things together and that's why in order for you to even understand what is your brand what to do about it the first step you have to understand is really to try to discover yourself try to go through the exercise and, and you know put on a sheet of paper the words that would really describe you based on your values behavior skills etc and then you will get really a nice understanding of those ingredients what make your brand and the beautiful thing about it that is that you hear it every time only you can be you right own it be unapologetic about it because only your blend of those ingredients will give your brand the flavor no one else will have the same one and that's really the best way <laughs> to describe your brand and this is really the best thing about it of course only you can be you but just own it don't even try to always as you're comparing yourself with others don't try to be someone else because why would you you are one set of ingredients that really works well and there is no need for you know having ingredients from someone else uh, and when you are doing this exercise try to think of your brand in a i call it in a sustainable way your brand is part of you it is really you you can't escape it it's everything that others think about you and and how you want to be perceived as well but think about it as a lifelong idea so not something that you could build or try to work on just to get your next job next promotion or next gig whatever it is but in a long term way in a sustainable way you are building it or you are working on it for your future for your whole life because you are having your brand with you all your life so remember this be unapologetically you uh i heard it many times but i will give credit to annika zuberas i heard it on on her podcast with kelly lucas recently and i just loved how she described it as well very often we hear it but do we actually do what we are supposed to do about it. Try not to compare with your, yourself with others because own who you are and that's it. That's the best brand out there anyway. And now I can imagine that you're thinking, okay, Maria, come to the point. Now, why would I care? And why is this even important? And this is one truth that leads the business world. People buy people not in an illegal way but people buy from people they like and people 
remember how you make them feel. And that is what drives the business relationships. I'm sure you have your special relationships with some of the brands. Uh, I know that, you know, I like to go to drive 15 minutes further to get my coffee because not only it's tasty, it can be tasty somewhere else. But when I go to that favorite coffee shop, people give me, people know straight away what I want. They, they, they prepare it. I like them. They are so nice. And I want that whole experience. You're having all of those experiences every day between so many choices that you can choose. You are going for the choice that is related to some person, some people at the end of the day. You're going somewhere where you really feel well and where you like people. And now this is really important why all of it actually matters in customer experience. I just described a little bit of my experience with coffee. You have your own experiences with any sorts of things you like, you enjoy, you buy. But I think that this is, this is really profoundly important. If you're listening today, it, there is a huge chance that you are in customer experience, right? In customer success, in, in that area, dealing with uh, people's experiences of your, your, your brand and your company. So you, what you are doing every day, you are influencing others to buy from you. Remember, people buy people. You are influencing them to buy your agenda, your timeline, your priorities, your customers' priorities, your consulting services or coaching services or, or, or any other services. But every single conversation that you're having with other people, you are influencing them in some way. With your customers as well, you are influencing them in every interactions you're having. They are buying your ideas. They are buying your best practices. They, they trust you. And what you say really makes an impact on them. It influences their actions, their behaviors, and their decisions. And especially if you're in customer experience, it's really your reputation within your company that matters a lot. So your brand is how you work with others. How you're perceived by others is really crucially important of how successful you are in the company as well. Uh, <clears throat> just a few other things that are really important. We are currently in the world where career progression is so important because people change jobs every, every few years, if nothing else. Um, and more than ever for progressing career, also your personal brand is very important. As much as it is really great to have you know, some recommendations from others and having a rep good reputation within your own company, and you can you know, stay there, you can progress there. It's really important that your personal brand is exhibited internally in your organization because you are influencing other people. But nowadays, especially when you are looking for career or, or, or even you know, assignments outside of your organization, it's becoming more and more important to have that visibility of your personal brand outside your organization as well. And when it comes to career progression, uh, I'm sure some of you have experienced with it, with it. I surely have experienced in my life that due to my, my, my brand, basically due to some, some online presence, I've been getting some opportunities for you know, speaking like this one or, or even interviews that potentially I wouldn't have got if I only waited for my CV, who is, which is of course full of you know, customer success related keywords, if I was waiting for that CV to be found somewhere in, in the system. So that's why I would encourage you think of your personal brand also in the context of online presence, uh, just because it's important. And the gig economy out there is huge at the moment. So who you are, your personal brand also influences not only your next job, but what people will buy from you, they will buy your services, even if you're not even thinking about it, but people want what you stand for and, and, and people will also be able to pay for it. So think of your careers in terms of if you're in corporate world, but also think of so many opportunities for different gigs outside of that, let's call it nine to five job, if that's of your interest. Uh, and then of course your personal brand, understanding who you are, what you stand for is also important for your own personal growth uh, 
because potentially you, you, as you grow, you may change some of those things and just reflecting on who you are always helps. And uh, the last thing here that I want to say, why is your personal brand important? <clears throat> oh, excuse me. <coughs> it's really because it's important for the organization you work for. And <clears throat> for me, that's really interesting because very often I, I hear people say, oh, I don't know if I should develop more of my online presence. What if my company is not happy with that? What if they think that I'm not doing things correctly, etc." Those are all myths. Like, in essence, if you are having your personal brand online, if it is visible to others, that effectively means that your company will no doubtly benefit from it. So it should really be in their interest to even encourage you to develop it and and really uh, do activities that will increase your online presence. Well, at least great companies are doing it. And as I promised, I, I wanted to give you a little bit of overview of how now that personal brand, when you discover who you are and what you stand for and why is that important for you, how you can take it out there to the world. And let's face it, we, we live in an online world. It's becoming more and more important. And there are just so, so, so many ways to do it. And I just want to say, whatever you do, do in a way that works for you, just because others are doing things in a way that works for them, or they think it's trendy, or they are creating the content or activities based on what they like, doesn't mean you have to follow the same route. It may not work for you, and that's okay. Uh, be aware of that brand, brand and how exhibiting it online can really, again, fit with your values. Uh, so there are like loads of different really practical things that you can do starting today. If you're in customer experience or success, there are so many communities out there and I'm sure you're part of many, but I would encourage you to, when you are part of some community, uh, try taking part in it. I've seen that happening in many people's lives, actually. They are kind of observers in loads of different communities. And it seems things are not happening for them. Like they do benefit from what is happening in the community, from the content. Other people are uh, exchanging conversations. But once you actually just start engaging with people, it's almost like everything changes because you are becoming part of it and you're really benefiting from the whole conversation and learning much more directly. Uh, there are really loads of ways how you can put your brand out there and it doesn't even have to be you know globally visible immediately if that's not something that you're keen on so you can attend events like this one and you know connect with people that you have met that that human connection is so important so no matter on which platform you are or is it the event is it community whatever it is make sure that you are actually connected with people one to one that is always the best way to put your brand out there. As I said, it doesn't have to be global immediately. Be engaged and, and that's really something that you can do very quickly and it's an easy step to start putting your brand out there. So just use those communities and events as great resources to ask the questions that you're interested in. Uh, then when you are attending some events, some talks, make some notes. So those are the learnings for you and you can always share them with others. I mean, it doesn't have to be publicly, shared in a post but even when you're having conversation with others that also tells them about you and your values based on what you have learned so the more um, reason you have to connect with someone and talk about certain topics especially what you heard about the, the you are really increasing your brand even if it is you know one person at a time but those we can call it small connections are really so important and then uh, you know the typical one is uh, when you want to share what you stand for, what you believe in, what is, uh, what are your skills, what you're good at in a subtle way, uh, in a way of presenting your expertise and skill, easy ways to write a blog post about it, of course. Um, and one thing that I think is really important, we all are generalists, right? But when you find that, that one thing or a few things that you're really passionate about, it, it's like your niche do more research about it and 
really start presenting yourself as an expert in it. Sometimes it, it comes really naturally based on your conversations, your learnings, your research, but bear in mind it's so much easier to present your brand out there when it is in something specific or related to a specific topic. Uh, as I said, do only the things that really work for you. Doesn't mean because others are doing something that you should follow as well. And I left LinkedIn here at last because we can talk about it for hours and hours, how you should engage on LinkedIn. Should you engage in LinkedIn? Uh, this could be a session on its own. But maybe first step that you can start doing straight away today is, you know, when you see a post that you like, just comment on it, right? That's the easiest way to start putting your ideas and your values out there and start kind of making sure other people are noticing you. Um, there are so many amazing people that I know that are really, really not active on LinkedIn, but they have huge personal brand. So just because there is almost a, a trend that, you know, you should be posting every day, like, no. Just because there are some trends out there doesn't mean that you should follow if it's not really in line with your values. Uh, so just do what is right for you and have that long term in mind. What is it that you're doing it for? Is it for your next job? OK, fair enough. Maybe you need to do more of some things. But is it a long term brain, your personal brand sustainment? Just think about that as well. And as I'm finishing, uh, I know we don't have much time for questions, sorry, uh, but I just wanted to let you know why your brand also matters in customer experience world. There are lots of logos here. Do you know who is the CEO of all of these companies? I don't. I probably wouldn't Google them. COO, C CEO, perhaps not, perhaps yes in some, but what I know for Many of these companies, I know who are their customer success managers. I know who are their thought leaders in the industry that I'm interested in. And tomorrow, if I have to, and I'm sure you share similar opinions, if I need to go and get the tool for something, those people that I know that I connect with these brands will be the first one on my mind. And this is also really important. So not only you're developing your brand, but your organization should be happy that you're working on it uh, because that ultimately really increases their possibilities of people buying from them. And uh, just to wrap up, so some of the main takeaways are, you can read them, but your personal brand is there with you. You don't have to invent it, just put it to use based on really what works for you. Because at the end of the day, uh, your, increasing your brand means increasing the brand for your organization as well ultimately bringing them more revenue because when people think of you they will connect them with you as well and they will be more willing to reach out and pay the services and i'm probably over time can i answer any questions and thank you very much <laughs> you know what you are right on time thank you so much this was a heck of a presentation couple of points that i wanted to make um number one just personal recommendation i always connect with all the speakers that are part of the event that i was a speaker at or that i attended now when you are a speaker at an event and all of a sudden you're saying hey it was great to share the stage with you at this summit i mean this is amazing right like because you are connecting with uh, an industry leader who is a thought leader who is you know just like you trying to uh, share the expertise and help others which is amazing right so i highly encourage you to reach out to all the speakers of the events that you attend or be a speaker at number two you've mentioned that you can uh, take notes from the events and maybe not publicly share them well i do encourage people to publicly sh share their notes i've actually know a couple of people who got uh, you know well known just because back then you know back when they started sharing the notes from the summits that they attended from events that they attended and people started to notice them so number three for me is just be a step outside of your comfort zone because this is where you grow you don't grow in the comfort zone you grow when you are stretched so be stretched and be um and want to be stretched be want to be stretched right like you need to to desire that so that when you are in your comfort zone that's when you are just not growing as much as you could so those are the things that i wanted to add there 
But uh, hey, Maria, you 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 gave us so much to think about. So thank you so much for all of your and uh, wisdom and uh, nuggets of information. Um, oh, thank Cindy, saying me. I can recommend your podcast. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's fine. You can easily find it. Women in customer success podcast. Uh, and yeah, ping me ping me a message. I would like to know your thoughts on this presentation, and if we can continue conversation, it would be great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Bye. Everyone, we'll see you next session.